to PT Dan's instructional videos. Today we're going to be talking about vasoconstriction versus vasodilation. So let's picture ourselves a balloon to get started with. Hey, if you squeeze one side of the balloon, what happens to the other? It puffs up. So you can actually play around with the balloon. So if you squeeze one side, the other side puffs up. And now if you squeeze that side, the other part of the balloon puffs up. Why does this happen? Because you've only got so much air in the balloon. Hey, you've only got so much blood in your body. So if I exercise and train my upper body, my body needs to send blood to my upper body to that working muscle tissue. So that means it must take blood away from the lower body. So let's say I started training quads and glutes, doing an exercise such as the squats. That means that my veins in those muscle groups will now vasodilate, which means they will actually increase in airy space to send more blood to that area. How does that happen? Well, all the muscles in your upper body will now constrict. So the muscle tissue around those arteries and veins will actually contract, squeezing the blood flow out of those veins, forcing the blood down to other parts of your body. So now, let's have a look at specific type of warm-up activities. Let's say, for example, that I am training legs. Alright, so we're training quads. What's a good warm-up? Do you think exercising and warming up using a full body action, such as a row, will be a good idea? Probably not. Why? Because the major muscle groups um, in a seated row will be your back and biceps and posterior head of your deltoids, the back of your shoulders, in those pulling actions. Therefore, your body's sending a massive amount of blood to your back and biceps. So it must be taking blood away from somewhere else, such as the lower extremities of your body. So what would be a good warm-up if we are training legs? Hmm, I know. What about cycling? Cycling only uses your lower body. So when you're cycling, your body vasoconstricts all the blood in your upper body, pushing, forcing the blood down to your lower legs, so the blood vessels in your lower body start to dilate. So if you're going to be training legs, what I suggest you do you spend three minutes cycling. This will be a good specific warm-up. Why only three minutes? Well, because we're not actually using the cycling to warm up your body. What you're doing is you're sending blood, not necessarily from your upper body to your lower body, but sending blood flow from your internal organs to your external skeletal muscle tissue. Because when you're not exercising, your body thinks, well, I'm not really using my muscle tissue that much, so I'll keep the blood run needed the most, such as your internal organs and your brain. So when we start to exercise, we now need to move the blood away from your internal organs and your brain to your skeletal muscle tissue. It only takes about three minutes in order to do that. So when you go straight into the gym, to be on the safe side, if you're not too sure what exercise to pick, pick the treadmill because that pretty much uses your entire body and sends all the blood from your internal organs to your entire skeletal muscle tissue. But if you want to be specific, find a cardio activity that's specific to the exercises and the muscles you're about to train in that workout. So if you're training legs, for example, the best idea is probably to jump on a cycle and just jump on a bike uh, for about three minutes. And what that will do is send blood from your internal organs to your skeletal muscle tissue. Now that you've got all the blood in your skeletal muscle tissue, you need to send it to the specific muscles you are about to exercise. So that's actually your true and real warm-up activity. It's always your first set of whatever activity you're about to do. So let's just say we're going to our squat. Set one will now be your warm-up. So this is where you're actually going to be warming up in your first set. So that's your warm up. So it needs to be high rep, high volume. Why high rep? Because the more repetitions you do, the more your body is going to pump blood into that area. So it's kind of like a pump set or a drop set, or it needs to be at least 15 repetitions plus, working at around about 70% effort. So that's your high rep, high volume set, and that's going to send blood from your skeletal muscle tissue to the specific exercises and the specific muscle tissue you're about to use for that exercise. So if we train legs, three minutes on cycling, that'll vasoconstrict all the 
blood in your internal organs, sending it to your skeletal muscle tissue. And because it's cycling in particular, it also constricts some of the muscle tissue in your upper body, forcing the blood down to your lower extremities, to your legs. The first set of your squat is now your specific warm-up. So now that's sending more blood from your skeletal muscle tissue to that specific muscle you're about to use. From then on, it's now it's very, very safe. It's very safe for you to go heavy because now there's plenty of blood and there's plenty of lubrication and there's plenty of blood to exercise those specific muscles without tearing tendons and ligaments, etc. So this is where you can start training heavier and heavier and heavier and do it completely safely. So this is what we want to do and this is why you don't want to be doing a cool down with a different type of activity. So just say we have done legs. Now all the blood is in our lower extremities. We want to keep the blood in your lower extremities in order to repair that muscle tissue. If we take the blood away from our lower extremities now, there's not enough nutrients and oxygen and other valuable tools in the bloodstream in order to help the repairing process recover and super compensate uh, from that workout. So we must keep the blood in our lower extremities. So if you do a legs workout, doing a cool down on a seated row machine or a cross trainer where you're really using the muscles in your upper body is a big, big no-no. Also what would therefore be another big no-no is that if you do a legs workout, and all the blood is in your lower extremities, the last thing you want to do is pick an exercise such as a shoulder press, which now requires a lot of blood flow in your upper body because your body is now constricted all the blood flow in your upper body, sending all the blood down to your lower body. So if all the blood's down there and there's no blood up here, if you go heavy in a shoulder press action after you've just done a squat, for example, there's no blood in your upper body and the chances of tearing muscle tissue and injuring yourself now dramatically goes up. So you definitely don't want to be mixing uh, a lower body activity with an upper body activity if you're going heavy for strength exercises. If you're doing a circuit training, it's different because you're only doing one set in each station. Therefore, you're sending a little blood here, a little bit of blood there, and by the end of your circuit, you've got a massive amount of uh, blood flow evenly spread throughout your entire skeletal muscle system. But you don't want to be exercising and doing a workout where you're doing legs and shoulders or training back and doing calves or training two different muscle groups on two different extremities of your body because your body finds it difficult sending blood to two different areas. So without any consideration, what I suggest is a really good split is this. Four day split. Train legs on day one, therefore all the blood stays in one area. Day two, train chest and back. Now all the blood stays in your torso. In that one workout, your body doesn't have to send blood to two different areas at the same time. For example, a bad example would be if you did chest and did triceps, your body now has to send blood to your torso and your limbs, two different areas at the same time. Your body has a bit of difficulty doing that. And therefore, you're not going to get as big a pumps, you're not going to get as much blood flow, and your recovery periods are dramatically going to decrease. Whereas if you train chest and back together at the same day, you keep your blood localized, and therefore your body gets good vasodilation and your recovery periods are extremely fast. Therefore, if you now train biceps, triceps, and shoulders all in one hit, your body can keep its blood in your arms and keep it localized, and therefore again get bigger pumps and get faster recovery periods. So day one, legs, day two, chest and back, day arms, day three is arms, take day four off and repeat it over again. And that's a fairly good cycle and something very different. But the latest um, science comes into those type of training splits. And uh, that's the most advanced way to create a training split today. And uh, that's why uh, our companies and my personal training has been such a success uh, in the very close past and uh, will continue to be such a success in the, f in the future. And I uh, hope you guys learned a lot from today's video. I uh, threw a massive amount of information at you at a very short period of time. So uh, keep in contact with me and uh, ask me any questions you like. And uh, watch the video over and over again until it sticks in your head because this one's an important one. Talk to you soon.